Hello guys, uh, Dan here. Welcome back to the second part uh, of this uh, mini series of painting uh, Mirage 5. Uh, in today's video we are going to paint uh, Durok himself and uh, this will be like a little longer video because I will show you how to paint uh, fur, a little bit of camo and then we are going to paint the glow of the weapons. Another thing I have to mention that uh, my camera broke down somewhere in the mid part of this video and blow up the colors. Uh, so this is the last video doing with that camera, so I had to purchase a new one. Uh, anyway, uh, without uh, further ado, uh, sit back, relax and enjoy this video. I started uh, priming the model uh, with a few very thin coats uh, of the black primer. I only ensured that I have an uh, even coverage so that I cannot see any metal under it. Uh, for the Durox uh, skin, I decided to go with the uh, Murfang Brown. Uh, when you are applying this color, uh, I just put it on a wet palette and I added a few drops of water to it uh, so it starts uh, flowing uh, very smooth from my brush. Uh, then I went uh, around the model and I painted uh, his uh, skin uh, with this color. Uh, when I was like, going uh, towards like the recesses, uh, I was going inside but not deeply inside and I went uh, in the two coats uh, until I was satisfied with the tone of this paint. Uh, now I'm going to show you how I actually paint the fur. I don't do like a traditional method of applying a paint and then just wash it. Uh, I'm doing this like with uh, three different uh, tones uh, of the brown color. Uh, first I will start with the uh, Rhinox hide and uh, I will start applying it at the roots of the hair of the fur. Uh, because, uh, like, if you see how the fur looks in the nature, it's getting uh, brighter toward the ends and it's uh, in the patches. So for the second layer, I will apply a Murfang Brown uh, in the middle part uh, of the hair. Uh, but uh, at the same moment, I'm going uh, to wet blend it uh, with the Rhinox Hide part, uh, just to create a transition uh, between the hairs. Uh, so you're going uh, I will go back and forth uh, to my wet palette and pick up the paint and while it's still wet I'm going to mix it uh, on the mid part. Uh, and then I will add the third layer with the scrag brown. This will be on the most raised uh, parts uh, of the hair just to create the brightest point. Uh, but at the same time after I'm happy with this I'm going to blend uh, the connection between the Murfang brown and the Scrag brown just to create a smoother transition uh, between this hair. So I will show you how I did this uh, on his head and uh, as well I will do like a fast forward clip on his uh, left arm so that he can see the full process. And this is uh, how the model looks uh, at this stage. Uh, now we are going to add uh, a little highlight to this uh, fur. Uh, I'm going to mix uh, a very little of the Screaming Skull uh, into the Murfang Brown. Uh, and I will use this uh, just to do a little highlight uh, on his uh, snout uh, and uh, ears uh, before proceeding uh, to highlight the fur. I will do a very very light, uh, it's not a dry brush, but it, you're going just to apply a little highlights in the little patches uh, around the raised areas uh, of the fur. And uh, as well you're going to use the same mix uh, to start uh, highlighting uh, his uh, skin. Uh, so you focus on the most raised areas uh, of the muscles, uh, on the toes uh, and uh, just try to connect uh, all this area together but uh, don't paint uh, inside the recesses and the shadowy areas. For the next step uh, I use a basic skin tone and I'm going to paint uh, inside the areas uh, of his ears and uh, I will also focus on the gum area around uh, his uh, teeth. Uh, 
this color is like really transparent, uh, so you will have to go in the two or three very little passes uh, to have a good tone of this color. Now I'm going to take a pure uh, Screaming Skull and I will use this paint uh, to block uh, the color of his uh, tooth and uh, fangs. Uh, so just be careful not to go any other areas that we already established or painted. Uh, in case that happens, just go back to the previous color and just repaint uh, the spot. Uh, to create a shadow on his teeth, uh, I'm going to use a contrast paint uh, skeleton horde. And I will apply it the uh, same as I'm applying the wash. So I will apply it uh, in one uh, very thick coat uh, straight from the bottle. Uh, just shake this paint really well before doing this and uh, not allow it to pull uh, too much around the teeth area. Uh, to finish off with uh, his gum and the area inside of his ears, I used a flat red and I added a few drops of water, so it's something between the shade uh, and the glaze, and I just went uh, with the one uh, very thin coat around it, so since you're painting over the basic skin tone, it will turn a little pinkish and it will uh, have like a really natural color. Uh, so use this paint as well to paint all the area that are connecting his uh, fangs uh, with his toes. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to paint uh, camo uh, on the model. Uh, if you are interested, I already did uh, two different videos and uh, I will just uh, include you the link in the top section here if you wanna know it more detailed and see it uh, in the different versions how I did. Uh, but in this case I just uh, painted his paints uh, with the khaki paint and uh, I also use this on his gauntlets uh, because I want them to be uh, camouflaged as well. Uh, so I went uh, in the two very thin coats uh, until I get a good coverage uh, with this paint so I cannot see any black under it. And then uh, I'm going to start uh, drawing some camo patterns. So your first color needs to be some very dark green. Uh, in this case I pick up a heavy green and uh, I'm going to uh, draw a couple of patterns uh, which will be like uh, a horizontal wave and then horizontal wave crossed with diagonal wave I will do like a splat and I will do some big uh, dot. Uh, so I will go around in some intervals and I'm going to mark this on the model. Uh, I will go over the areas like you will go over the pocket, you will go inside the recesses uh, and uh, try it, uh, when you're drawing them, so all of them to be in the same uh, uh, like if, if you draw them horizontally, try to uh, match mo most of them to be horizontal. If you start vertically, do them vertically. Uh, for the second color, uh, it's going to be some uh, very dark brown. Uh, so I'm going to use a Rhinox Hide and uh, I'm going to start applying the same patterns. Uh, but in this case, I won't be afraid to overlap uh, over the existing patterns that I already did. Uh, so just go around and fill up uh, the most of the empty areas that you have. And then for the last layer, I'm going to use a paint called Ivory. And uh, this time, uh, my only pattern is going to be a little dots. Uh, and I'm going to mark them uh, in some random areas, but I will make some like decent intervals uh, in between. Uh, and I'm going to overlap the existing patterns that I did, uh, but also I'm going to put it in some areas that uh, so far I haven't put uh, any patterns. Uh, while I still have this paint uh, on my brush, I'm going to use this opportunity to highlight uh, his uh, teeth and uh, fangs. Uh, so I will go uh, and do very light highlight, uh, focusing on the only most raised areas of the teeth and on the fangs, avoiding uh, to go inside the shadow areas and the recesses. 
Uh, to finish off uh, with the patterns on his pants, I'm going to mix a strong tone and a soft tone and I'm going to apply a uh, heavy wash around the pants. And uh, this will be the only thing that we're going to do because uh, after this wash gets dried, uh, everything will be highlighted naturally and the uh, camo will actually naturally hide uh, some details. Uh, so you actually don't need to do any highlights on top of this, uh, it will uh, look good. As you can see, this is the moment when my camera broke down and started uh, blowing off the colors. So sorry one more time, this was the last video I made uh, with this uh, camera, so I already got a new one. Uh, so from the future, uh, the quality of it, the videos will be much better. Now we are going to move on and start uh, painting his backpack and his chest armor. Uh, I will start uh, with uh, blocking all these areas uh, with the heavy black green. Uh, I'm going to paint it uh, in uh, two very thin coats uh, and I will just uh, make sure that uh, I don't see any black areas uh, transparent through it so that uh, my coverage is really good. Uh, I actually added a drop of water when I put this uh, paint on my wet palette, uh, so it had a good consistency, so it was very easy to achieve a very good coverage. I decided that his uh, armor and the backpack will be a different uh, tone of the green color than the leather straps, uh, so I used the refractive green and uh, I repainted uh, his uh, chest armor and the backpack uh, with this color, uh, but this time uh, I was uh, focusing uh, of uh, trying not to go inside the recesses so that I'm going to use the previous green uh, paint that I painted as my first uh, shadow. For my first uh, highlight, I'm going to use uh, Goblin Green and I'm going to focus uh, mostly uh, on the raised areas and uh, I will try to cover like 80 to 90% uh, of the previous paint. Uh, I will be really careful uh, around the recesses and the shadowy areas uh, because I want uh, to leave my previous two colors as my shadows. And uh, for the final highlight, I'm going to mix a little of sunny skin tone uh, into the goblin green and uh, this will be for my edge highlights, uh, for the most raised areas, uh, like if you have any folds, uh, you will just uh, highlight uh, the highest area of those folds. So just go around the model and uh, just highlight those areas. Uh, you will have to go maybe in the two passes to have like a really good tone. Uh, now we are going to do a similar thing uh, highlighting uh, the green leather straps. I'm going to pick up uh, dark green and uh, I'm going uh, to try to paint the leather straps uh, with this color uh, but I will focus uh, leaving the recesses intact so that the previous uh, heavy dark green color act as my shadow and then I'm going to add a little of sunny skin tone uh, to create a highlight color but this time I'm going to use a stippling technique and uh, just using the tip of my brush and touching the surface uh, up and down really quickly uh, to create the effects uh, of the worn uh, leather on these straps uh, so you go around uh, these areas and just apply uh, very little highlights it will actually look uh, really good and it will look like it is uh, like little worn and damaged uh, during the time Uh, for the collar and uh, all these yellow details, uh, I will use a heavy gold brown as my base paint and uh, I will just cover them uh, in uh, one uh, or two very thin coats uh, so that you have like uh, a really golden color. 
Uh, just be careful when you're painting this, uh, you don't want to go inside of the recesses or messed up the highlights that we already done here. Uh, if by any chance that happens, just go back to the previous green and do a little repairs. Now I'm going to apply a wash with a Cassandra Yellow. Uh, if you don't have this color, because I don't know, uh, is it still uh, manufactured by Games Workshop, you can use the Griefhound uh, Orange uh, Contrast Paint. Uh, it will achieve a totally same effect. Uh, so apply this wash uh, very carefully and uh, just wait for it uh, to properly dry. And then uh, I'm going to use a flat yellow and uh, apply it uh, as my uh, final edge highlight. Uh, so try to focus uh, only on the most raised areas, uh, use the tip of your brush and uh, just draw a little edge highlight and uh, this will be enough uh, to tie the whole armor together and everything will uh, already start looking great. Now I'm going to show you how to do a worn leather effect on his uh, scabbard for the sword. So first uh, that I'm going to do is uh, to paint uh, the whole area with the uh, Rhinox hide. Uh, so just be careful, again uh, I empathize on this all the time, uh, just try not to paint uh, over the armor we already painted and all the straps so we don't have to do a double work there. And now I'm going to use one of my better brushes with a very good top. And I will pick up a scrap brown and I will start uh, going around and uh, drawing a little lines. And as well I will stipple a little dots uh, on the edges. Uh, this is going to create uh, like effect uh, that uh, this letter is uh, scratched. Uh, so just go a couple of times around and uh, try to draw uh, very thin lines and uh, when I'm putting dots uh, just put them in some interval uh, close together but don't put them too much close so that doesn't look like a straight line because you want some intersections there. And then I'm going to use uh, that cloud brown uh, which is a lighter version of the scrap brown and I will just go and reinforce uh, these scratches uh, as my highlights. So you will go around the same areas, you will apply the same technique, uh, but you will do less. Uh, now I'm going to finish off with his backpack and I'm going to do some stitches. I'm going to use a dark sand and then I will go around the edges of the backpack with this uh, color and I'm going to put a big dots uh, on the areas that are connecting uh, two letter parts. Uh, so this is really great effect and it will create illusion of the stitches and it will actually look really great on this model. Uh, we are almost uh, getting done uh, painting this model. Uh, only thing that is left is to paint uh, his weapons and the grenades. Uh, so let's start uh, doing the weapons. Uh, I will pick up the ice yellow first and uh, I will go uh, on these like energy bars that he have and I will just uh, paint them uh, in the few very thin coats uh, uh, with this color. If you made a mistake here and go inside the recess, uh, just pick up your uh, primer black and just uh, repair it. Point uh, when I'm doing this is that you want to be uh, very clean and very precise. So you focus only on the, the flat area that is raised uh, and don't go inside uh, because you want uh, this effect to be uh, really crisp. Uh, now I pick up the orange fire 
and I just painted uh, one third of uh, these energy bars. Uh, so I decided uh, that the part closer to his hands uh, will be with the orange fire and the part uh, most uh, further uh, from his hands is going to be painted with the green. The green color I chose is Escorpena green, uh, but you can choose any very bright green or like a fluorescent green. Uh, it will going uh, to create a really nice effect. Uh, so just paint the last uh, third uh, of these energy bars uh, with this color. Uh, before I continue uh, highlighting the black parts, I will just pick up my black uh, primer color and I'm just going to do all the cleanups uh, around all the black areas. Wherever I made a mistake with the different colors that I was painting before, I'm just going to tidy up everything and prepare it uh, for the highlights. Uh, now I'm going to mix uh, a little white into the black uh, just to create uh, like a not super dark gray uh, but a medium gray tone and I will start uh, highlighting actually I'm going to do the edge highlight uh, on all the buckles and uh, when I'm going to do the weapons I will start uh, tracing uh, all the sharp edges of the weapon. Uh, so I will try to do a, like edge highlight uh, with the side of my brush. I will try to make an angle between like 45 to 90 degree and then uh, pulling the side of my brush just to leave uh, the very thin lines. Uh, when that is not possible you are trying to use the tip of your brush so pick up one of your better brushes for this stage and just go around and uh, mark these areas. And uh, for the final highlight, you are going to use uh, pure white. Uh, so you're going to repeat the same process uh, of the highlights, just tracing uh, all the sharp edges and following uh, all the lines of the weapon. Uh, but at this stage, uh, you want to focus on a little less areas than you covered uh, with the gray. Uh, this will actually create a very amazing uh, like highlight. And, uh, after this we won't have to do anything else. Uh, in case you made some little mistakes, uh, you can always go back to your black as your primer and just uh, fix those lines. If you make them too thick, uh, just make them a little thinner and do a little touches. And uh, this model will start looking really great uh, after this highlight because it will tie everything uh, together. I wanted the little details on the grenades like the handles and the top parts to be a different uh, tone of the color. So I pick up a periscope and I made a wash out of it. Uh, so actually I put one drop of periscope and like four drops of water and I just did like a very light uh, glaze uh, on top of uh, these parts and then I left them to dry properly. And then I pick up a white again and do a little highlight. Uh, at this stage uh, I also use a white uh, to paint up his eyes. I just uh, painted uh, the inside area of the eye uh, with the white and then I just pick up uh, a red color and uh, made uh, a little dot as uh, his pupil just to make him uh, look a little angry. And that will be it. Uh, this little project uh, is completed. Uh, if you are interested how I did the bases, I will include you the link uh, to the video in the section down below. 
and uh, if you're interested how I paint uh, Margot, a uh, video about her will be the part one of this mini series. Uh, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, as usual, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the section down below and I will try to do my best. Uh, this will be all for now, guys. Uh, take care, stay safe and uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.